Okay guys, welcome to another video, and today I'm going to be trying to repair my mom's uh, Alcatel and Touch Your XL. So recently, both of her phones, literally within one week, went in a boot loop, her Moto Z2 Force and her Alcatel One Touch Fierce XL. Now this one, we're not factory data resetting, but we did factory data reset the Moto Z because everything was backed up to the cloud, or like, you know, the photos, but this one doesn't have its photos backed up. And it has a bunch of, you know, photos and vital, like, messages that we need to get off of it. And it boot loops. So basically this is what it does. I don't know if it has charge. Okay, it does. Um, but it basically tries to turn on. Then, you know, it'll restart. It's just like any boot loop. So we ordered a battery, which will hopefully fix it. I'm not quite sure because the phone does have charge and then keep the charge to boot loop. But usually signs of boot loops, like, usually phones like these don't actually have, like, hardware issues to boot loop. But if it turns out that's not the issue, I'll remove the motherboard, heat it up. And see if that fixes it, because that does fix it in some scenarios, but that's probably a temporary fix, and we'd have to go to a, like a repair shop to get it permanently fixed. But it does turn on if you put it in the freezer, which is also really weird. But that was another reason why it could maybe be a battery issue, because um, my ZTE uh, um, Z Max Pro had that same issue, <clears throat> but except the battery was disconnected. So basically, here's the new battery. It came in this package. I haven't even opened it yet. So I guess I'll just remove this. Just take it out. It's in a little plastic seal. So this is the battery. Put that to the side. So we're gonna start removing everything of this. Let me just turn this off real fast. Okay, so I've successfully turned it off. So I'm just gonna remove the case on the back. It usually does. And it's not water damaged. It's just it always gets the moisture indicator on this thing just randomly tripped. I'm not quite sure why. Apparently a lot of them do this. Um so yeah, I'll, it's big, it's pretty simple, but the only thing is I'm assuming there's, yep, there's a screw underneath this void sticker, and I need to get that off without voiding it. It's not like, you know, it's going to do anything. But yeah, just kind of, just trigger my OCD if that thing does break. So I'm just going to start removing some screws, and I need to find a, oh wait, I could put the screws in the back shell. Let's put those there. So this may or may not work. I'm going to upload it either way. Um, but yeah, but I'm pretty sure that it actually might be a motherboard issue. But we're just going to go for the easy one first, then I'll, you know, take out the motherboard and heat it up which I'm pretty sure would fix the issue. Um, but I'm really hoping it's a battery issue, even though, you know, battery does charge and things. So I'm just gonna start removing all these screws. My mom got this a couple years ago. It's been fairly reliable since then, or since we got it, and that's why it's really surprising. So we'll just remove all these screws right here. There's one on the top left. So the battery was actually pretty expensive for some reason. Usually batteries don't cost that much, but it cost us like 20 $28 for one battery for not even like a, it's not even a high capacity battery. It's like 2,800 milliamps hours Okay, I've got one more actually probably two because the void sticker So I just like I gotta do it. I don't know how let me just find a way to remove this eh, Broke anyways, so I guess I'll just remove it like this now um, So yeah, it's the final screw and it doesn't matter. I don't need to keep them like any you know layout because they're all the same size so, now I believe that you just kind of, it's kind of hard to show this to you. There, yeah, there you go. Just do that. It's, this is a fairly simple phone to open because it's a budget phone. It only cost us like $100 brand new like two years ago. Okay. Why is the motherboard popping up at the bottom? Um, and also for some reason you need to remove the <clears throat> volume buttons because the volume buttons and power button are physically connected to the phone. So why is, is, why is it popping up like this? Okay, so the battery's found a way to literally connect itself. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it's connected to the back panel for some reason. I need to figure that out. Okay, so I just watched a video, and apparently you can just, like, pop it right off. So I'm just going to do that. Okay, so I popped it off. It's been, like, 20 seconds, so that's nice. So I'm just going to hook up the next the battery and see if that works. If it doesn't work, I don't know if we're going to return it, if we're going to keep it. I'm not quite sure because technically wasn't the seller's issue that this that it wasn't the real problem to our phone okay so now i gotta power it on like don't oh it's a, it is a top button okay looks like it's dead anyways i'll have to go oh never mind it's turning on okay so if it does boot loop which it like 80 percent chance that it actually will i'll have to remove the motherboard and things and then actually go inside so the battery act battery life has actually been pretty terrible anyways so that'd be really nice if this was the issue. And never mind, it's gonna boot loop, isn't it? Yep, it's boot looping test.
Another weird quirk about the inside of this phone is that the vibration motor or sound or like, you know, the speaker, I don't know, on oh, no, the speakers up there or it's probably, I don't know. It's, oh, yeah, it's right there. It's attached there. But the vibration motor is physically soldered onto the motherboard, which isn't unnormal, but it's you got to remove it to remove the motherboard. It's not like actually like on the motherboard. It's soldered on like that, which is pretty annoying. So I got to figure out how to do that. OK, yeah, so I just can't get this out. So I'm just going to have to heat up the motherboard with it physically attached. I have to just plug everything back in and uh yeah okay so i'm back this is a final update so yeah i i put in the freezer for like literally like three minutes and still boot looped um i could have put it in for longer and that's actually when it would work but yeah it's still just boot looping and my mom apparently the photos were backed up the only thing is messages on this thing so we're just gonna have to um i don't know we'll just like if we ever need to get messages off of it we're just gonna you know, put it in the freezer for like, you know, 15 minutes or something, then turn it on, get them, get those off. But apparently this was a major issue for these phones. A lot of people had them. It's just, there wasn't many documentation on it, but <clears throat> yeah, she's using the Google Pixel to Excel any now. Anyways, this phone's just going to kind of be sitting around, I guess. Uh, we might actually pay for someone to actually fully fix it at a later date, but yeah, I'm just going to kind of keep it like, I guess in my little collection of phone box until we can you know get it fixed or something but yeah that's pretty much it so i guess this was kind of a fail video but i'm just gonna upload it because it's just like the first of its kind i guess besides me removing the iphone 6 motherboard so yeah if you guys enjoyed this video uh like on the like button and subscribe if you feel like it and i'll see you guys in the next video peace out <laughs>